What does it mean for a functional program to be correct? One possible answer would be that the definitions in the program satisfy certain laws. Often these laws are represented as equalities between terms. In this session and the next you're going to see proof techniques that can show that a given set of operations satisfy certain laws. The material in these two sessions is an important dimension of functional programming because it demonstrates one of the core claims of FP, namely that it is more amenable to reasoning about programs. On the other hand, the programming parts in this course are not dependent on it and none of the assignments that you are going to do will test this. So if you want to go fast, you can skip the material in the next two sessions. On the other hand, EPFL students are required to learn this material because it will be used in the physical exams that we do here at EPFL. We call the concatenation operation plus plus on lists. What would it mean to say that plus plus or the version comcat that we've written is correct? Well, one criterion for correctness would be to say that plus plus satisfies certain laws that we would expect from concatenation. The laws are that concatenation is associative, so I can put the parentheses here either to the left or to the right of a double concatenation, and that nil is a right unit and a left unit. That means for any list xs, xs followed by nil is xs, and nil followed by xs is again xs. The question is, given properties like these, how can we prove them? And the answer is by a new proof principle that we are going to introduce now, which is called structural induction on lists. So to introduce structural induction, it's good to first look at its uh, close sibling natural induction. Natural induction is a proof principle that you apply when you want to uh, prove uh, something for all integers greater or equal some smallest integer b. The idea there is that to show a property that the property will hold for all such integers, you just need to show that it holds for the smallest element b, for the base case, and then for all other integers you need to show the induction step. The induction step is that if you have p of n, if you assume p of n, then you can uh, conclude that p of n plus 1 also holds. If you have proven that, then the principle of natural induction says that the uh, property p holds for all integers greater or equal to b. So here's an example to recap natural induction. Uh, we are looking again at factorial, so here's the uh, usual definition of factorial, and we want to show that for all n greater or equal to 4, we have that factorial of n is greater or equal to the power of 2 to the n. So instead of power, we also could use the mathematical notation 2 to the n. So we do that by proof of natural induction. The base case obviously is n equals 4. That's the smallest number we have to consider. And there we can just do it by a simple calculation. Factorial of 4 is 24 and power of 2 to the 4th is 16. 24 is greater or equal 16. So the case is established. For the induction step then we assume that the property holds for n. So we would assume that factorial of n is greater or equal to 2 to the n. And we have to prove the same thing for n plus 1. So let's see what we do. Factorial of n plus 1 is equal, or here if we've widened that to greater or equal, to n plus 1 times factorial of n because that's how we have defined factorial. That's just the second clause in the factorial uh, definition. And that is definitely greater than 2 times factorial n, because we know that n is greater or equal 4, so n plus 1 is greater or equal 5. And finally, by the induction hypothesis, we know that 2 times factorial n is greater or equal than 2 times power of 2 to the nth because our induction hypothesis was that uh, factorial of n is greater or equal to power of 2 to the n. And we can use that induction hypothesis freely in our proof. So finally, in the last step, we just simplify power. So 2 times 2 to the n 
is, as we know, the same as 2 to the n plus 1. So this is power 2 to the n plus 1, and that's precisely what we want to prove. Factorial n plus 1 is proven to be greater or equal to power of 2 n plus 1. So it follows that the property holds for all integers n greater or equal 4. So one thing we've used here implicitly and quite liberally is that we have applied reduction steps as equalities to parts of terms. So we have used a reduction uh, in our proof of saying left-hand side equals right-hand side. That works because pure functional programs don't have side effects, so reducing a term is really equivalent to rewriting that term. There's no other effect to be taken account of. That principle is called referential transparency. It's an important tool for equational proofs of functional programs. So let's look at structural induction now. The principle of structural induction is analogous to natural induction. The idea is that we want to prove a property P for all lists success. And to do that, we just need to show that P of the empty list holds, that would be the base case, and that second, for any list XS and any element X, we show the induction step, which uh, says, assume P of the list XS holds, then you need to show that P of X followed by the list XS also holds. So instead of constructing numbers starting from a base case and adding one, we construct lists starting from the empty list and consing elements to the top of the list. So back to our concat example. We'd like to show that for any lists XS, YS, ZS, concatenation is associative. That means we can put the parentheses here to the left or to the right. To do this, we use a structural induction on the list XS. From the previous implementation of concat that you see here, we can distill two defining clauses for plus plus. We can say, well, if the first element XS is nil and is followed by a list YS, then we get YS here. And the second clause would say, well, if the first list is X followed by XS1 and then YS, then the answer would be X followed by the concatenation of XS1 and YS. So these two classes here, they're directly derived from the implementation. Essentially, they codify what the implementation does. So let's now look at the structure induction. The base case would be that our list XS equals nil. So here we would have for the left-hand side of our equation nil followed by YS followed by ZS. And that can, can be simplified to just YS followed by ZS. Why? Because of the first clause of plus plus, which says nil followed by ys is ys. Let's look at the right hand side of the equation. There we would have nil followed by and now in the parentheses to the right, ys and zs. But of course, again, we can invoke the first clause of plus plus and simplify to ys plus zs. So we have an equality here and here, and the case is established. So let's now turn to the induction step. As the leftmost list, we would have x followed by xs, and then ys, and then zs, and the left-hand side has all parentheses going to the left. How can we simplify that? Well, one thing we can do is we can pull the x out of the parentheses with the xs, so now xs would go with ys, and the x would be outside of that list. That we can do by the second clause of concat, which says concatenating a list that starts with x is a list that starts with x and a concatenation of the rest of the list. So that was the second clause of concat that said that. Once we have that, what's the next step? Well, x is still within another head list, so we can invoke the second clause of concat again. And now we would have uh, x uh, leading the whole result of uh, the concatenation. So what's the next step? Well, the next step would be that, look here, what you see is uh, XS followed by YS followed by ZS. That's actually the left-hand side of our induction hypothesis, which says, assume you have proven the equation already for the list XS. So we can invoke the induction hypothesis and rewrite this expression here to the expression on the right hand side. So parentheses here now go to the right. And that's all we're going to do with the left hand side. Let's now turn to the right hand side. 
So here we would have the parentheses go to the right, y as and z as gets concatenated, and then we have on the left x followed by xs. What can we do with that expression? Well, one thing we can do is again invoke the second clause of plus plus to pull out the x from the first list here. And that gives x followed by xs followed by ys and zs. And that is exactly the same as what we simplified the left hand side to. So the case and with it the property is established. Let's do an exercise. Uh, let's look at the second law for concat, namely that nil is a right unit for xs. Can you show by induction that that law holds? And how many equations do you need for the inductive step? Two, three, or four? So let's see how we would prove this. Let's do the base case first. So the base case would be that the list xs equals nil. Uh, then we have on the left hand side nil plus plus nil and that is the same as nil by the first clause of concat and that is already what we need. So we have uh, when if xs equals nil, xs plus nil is the same as xs. So let's have, have a look at the induction step. That would be x followed by xs. So what we need to prove is that x followed by xs plus plus nil. That should be the same as x followed by xs. So how would we go about that? Well, uh, we have x inside a, a, con a cons here, so we can invoke the first clause of plus plus to pull it out. So that would be x followed by xs plus plus nil. Second clause. And that can be simplified to just x followed by xs by the induction hypothesis. Because we know, we can be allowed to assume that xs followed by nil is xs. And that is what we wanted to achieve here. So we have established the case. So the answer to the uh, question was, we need two steps to establish the inductive step.